and no answers, and I want to understand how to move forward with this. One of the issues was informed consent. The other was the medical culture. Okay, so let's start with medical culture, and I want to talk to Dr. Angus. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, and, and I, I think because he's the, the exception, there are a few others perhaps. Your reflections on medical culture, why have people been um, gaslighted? Why have they been not listened to, not heard, not understood? Why are people being treated like the problem is theirs and, and not ours? Uh, thank you. Um, it, look, it, it's what's been alluded to before, it, it, it's a culture. And you're now actually fighting a belief system of my colleagues. I'm embarrassed and I'm appalled at the conduct of my colleagues. I'm embarrassed and appalled at the conduct. Yes, I'm sorry? Uh, it, it, it's beyond that now. It's actually a culture. It, no, it's beyond the boys club. It's a culture. They believe, they believe it's the right thing to do. So you, you, you're dealing with a culture that, and, and I, I don't know how and when that changed. I can tell you, I can go through the history of, of meshes and tapes and, and, and how it all started. It, it was back in 1996, uh, within a year, uh, uh, Johnson & Johnson had bought the rights to the first tape. Uh, within another year, the whole of us were bombarded with this uh, tape. You know, this, we were seduced. It was a seduction on a global commercial scale. And I, I can tell you, the, the Big Mesh conference was in Chicago. We were all to go to the Big Mesh conference where all the, the results were presented. I went to that conference in Chicago. It was medical Disneyland. Three floors of Chicago Hilton were medical companies, device companies. It had all the most beautiful people standing there to talk to you, all the biggest lights. Or, or it was just bizarre how it, 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 in a year, seduced the world. And, it, and everyone was a winner. The, the public hospitals were told that their 90 minute, 120 minute operation could be done in 15 minutes. They could get through six patients at, to one, and what they did before. The NHS embraced that with, with vigour. With, they were absolutely enthralled. They had a waiting list for years. So waiting lists went down. Hospital costs were less. Uh, hospitals had patients in operating theatres for 15 minutes, not 120 minutes. A hospital operating running cost is $3,000 an hour. To run an operating theatre and treat a patient is $3,000 an hour. So if you could reduce that by sixfold, you were making enormous inroads into, into health care, or you believed you were making enormous inroads. Private hospitals loved it, more patients through. Doctors loved it, more patients through. And you guys were seduced. You were told, this is the latest technology. This is the latest whiz-bang thing. You'll be a new woman. You'll be a new man. But, 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 but uh, that's, what, that's what the sales pitch was at that time. It was a, a seduction on a global scale, and everyone was seduced. Around that time, there were quite a few of me and my older colleagues, sadly, who aren't with us anymore, who aren't here to, to um, speak on this, who didn't embrace this, who weren't uh, taken in by the hype and seduction. And, and, and we didn't even have to be suspicious. The data was there. In Chicago, at that conference, the studies were small. The studies had low, short follow-up. They had high complication rates. And those of us who got up, which was me, and said, hang on, our complication rates are too high. And we said, oh, there's a learning curve. <laughs> and and, and I, I, I said, hang on a minute, I actually can't see the learning curve. Here you're telling me this operation is so simple, it's done in 15 minutes. We're operating in an area we've been operating in for 100 years, and it's done by the world's experts. Where's the learning curve? It's a bit like credentialing that they're talking about now. Yes. Credentialing can really cloud this issue. The, the issue is mesh. The issue is mesh. It's a foreign body. And, 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 and I, think, I think politically the, the issue has been crowded. Can I tell you the elephant in the room? The elephant in the room is you have a whole generation of surgeons. My colleagues who have only been trained particularly in tapes, in only in tapes and in meshes. That, uh, uh, that, that, but that's the elephant of the room. Shouldn't even get to extraction stage. It should never have been inserted. But now we're all meshes. 
So, Dr. Angus, where, where to from here? How do we? We've heard that we that, that doctors don't listen, and and that we've failed. How do we turn the culture Sadly, around? Sadly, as a profession, we are bad. As a profession, we are bad. You can't leave us to monitor ourselves. We failed time and time again in monitoring ourselves. You need to have an independent, powerful body that can independently look after you guys, irrespective of what we do. Right. So can I then ask about informed consent? Because that's another key part of this. And may I give that to you, Anne? 